Until this day, historians, researchers, fans of the abnormal and just plain enthusiasts argue about whether or not the so-called Philadelphia experiment, when an entire ship along with its crew was actually teleported, happened or not. So is it truth or fiction? Whom to believe? Sit back and enjoy. The Mysterious Experiment Alright, so relatively official version goes like this. During World War II, many countries were developing methods of making warships invisible from radar. In particular, the Americans commissioned Albert Einstein to do research in this particular field. The task was to ensure, as a minimum, the invisibility of the ship on the radar, and as a maximum, visual invisibility. The scientists suggested that this could be achieved by using strong electromagnetic radiation. Therefore, four powerful electromagnetic field generators were built under his supervision. The object of the experiment was the USS Eldridge, launched on July 25, 1943. On board of the destroyer, which was based in Philadelphia, those very generators were installed. Initial experiments, which were conducted already in summer, showed that there is an effect, and the generators were not even used to their full capacity. However, some members of the crew experienced headaches, dizziness, vomiting, and other severe issues during the experiments. Several people received tissue burns. Despite this, the command of the U.S. Navy still decided to test at maximum power generators. At 9 a.m. on October 28th of 1943, all electromagnetic generators started working at peak power. In a few minutes, the destroyer was covered by a strange greenish haze. It disappeared from radar screens and then completely disappeared. But the Eldridge soon returned, only to find itself in Norfolk, more than 300 miles away from the experiment. Sometime later, the destroyer came back. When the scientists and military boarded the ship, they saw something out of a horror movie. Some of the sailors, who had suffered horrific burns, were in a half-conscious state. A few tens of men were missing altogether, and the bodies of the dead were literally melted into the hull of the Eldridge. Only about 20 of the sailors were relatively healthy and were in a more or less adequate condition. The results forced the US Navy command to dramatically change its attitude to further experiments. The experiment itself was quickly abandoned, and all data relating to its conduction was completely classified. An unexpected interest after the war Until a certain time, no one remembered about the experiment until a rather ironic coincidence happened. One of the American ufologists, Maurice Jessup, published his book Evidence for UFOs in 1955. After the book was published, Jessup was contacted by a person named Carlos Miguel Allende, who told the ufologist that he knew of an amazing and mysterious experiment conducted back in 1943. And in the same letter, Allende detailed the Philadelphia experiment. When the Office of Naval Research in 1956 received the book with notes on its pages, the baffled military called Jessup to explain the nature of the notes and the source of the information. The fact is that the notes concern the famous Einstein field theory, namely the interaction of elementary particles. Jessup himself immediately recognized Allende's handwriting. Subsequently, the ufologist engaged in active collection of information about the experiment, but other than that letter from the mysterious Allende, no other facts could be found. Nevertheless, Jessup's close friend, Manson Valentine, assured that shortly before his death, Jessup told his friend that he had found the clue and offered to meet him on April 20, 1959. However, on the same day the ufologist was found in the garage, inside the car with the engine still running, and Valentine himself assured that Jessup could still be saved. I guess he could have been saved. He was still alive when they found him. They must have let him die. Therefore, for supporters of the version about the truth of the experiment, Jessup's death was a real revelation. It is obvious that it was the work of some secret agents who decided to permanently close the mouth of two curious researchers. The Pros and Cons But many of the ufologist's acquaintances did not see anything unusual in the suicide of the ufologist. Jessup had serious financial problems, his personal life was not good either, and if you add to this not too stable psyche, then that's why this happened. However, naturally, there were many who refused to believe in Jessup's voluntary demise, and interest in the Philadelphia experiment flared up even more. Some asserted that the anonymous Carlos Miguel Allende was in fact Carl Allen, who had actually served at the Philadelphia naval base in the 1940s. 
However, by that time the man was suffering from pronounced mental problems, and only a completely uneducated person or a lunatic like him could believe his words. The US Navy itself tried not to react at all until the film The Philadelphia Experiment came out in the early 1980s. This immediately gave rise to Philadelphia hysteria, when newspapers even found a certain Alfred Billick, who assured everyone that he served in the destroyer, took part in the experiment and certainly witnessed how the ship disappeared. Moreover, Billick stated that in reality the ship briefly traveled to the future and Alfred himself even managed to exchange a few words with the aliens. What they told him, the former sailor, however, modestly kept silent. And then the US Navy broke down, publishing the Eldridge logbook, which did not mention the experiment and the destroyer's location on October 28th of 1943 was not at all in Philadelphia. Yet the public still refused to believe it, so interviews were arranged with the living members of the Eldridge crew. They stated categorically that there were no disappearances, no imprinted bodies, nothing at all. It also turned out that Alfred Billick had never served in Philadelphia. Incidentally, during the interview already 75-year-old former sailor Ed Weiss stated, I think somebody made that up by getting high on pot. The Electrician's Version Finally, in a surge of mass interest in the experiment, Edward Dudgeon, who at the time was working as an electrician at the Navy base in Philadelphia, emerged from oblivion. The man did not deny that experiments with the electromagnetic field had been conducted on the destroyer. And by the way, he dealt a serious blow to proponents of mysticism. True, when the generators were turned on full power, the ship was wrapped in a green glow. But this phenomenon has long been explained by scientists, and it is known almost since antiquity under the name Lights of Saint Elmo. As for the almost momentary movement of the destroyer, again, Edward Dudgeon was not hiding anything. Yes, indeed, only not an instantaneous movement, but within a few hours. The fact is that during the war, the so-called water channels were created through which only military vessels were allowed to move. To give you an example, the usual two-day sea route through the canal was reduced to six hours. At the same time, civilian ships had no idea that such a thing had even existed. Hence the rumors about the almost simultaneous movement of ships. And finally, after the electrician's revelations, the US Navy's silence became clear. Firstly, if Jessup had really discovered something, he could have been simply locked up in a closed hospital rather than killed almost publicly. Secondly, the military, especially in the midst of the Cold War, could not have openly talked about the existence of such high-speed channels for moving warships. What's more, there is probably no mysticism or some sort of mystery. Someone just saw something from the shores and then drew conclusions. And then the law of rumors spreading worked. We are curious to hear what do you think about it. Write in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and look out for new videos on this channel.